temperature of about 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. So it's very, very cold. And the Big Bang, of course, is hot. It's expanded and the expansion causes radiation to cool down to that small value that we see at the moment. Now, I can quite say this, I think it's on my picture, but what I didn't say is this region here, called thermal equilibrium, that is the largest of these volumes, and it's so big, usually, that it's much bigger than all the others put together. And this is where you end up, something which is left to itself. And so, what this is telling us is that you're looking at something in thermal equilibrium. Well, does that make sense? You see, you go back, and as you go back, this curve goes down and down and down, and you finally come to the place where the entropy is a maximum. Now, you don't have to be a mathematician to see there's something fishy going on here, because a maximum means the well, biggest, and it's got to be the smallest. So how did that happen? Well, the answer to this, it's not a, it's not a paradox, it sort of seems to be, Sometimes people go in the wrong direction and try to explain this and say maybe it's because the universe was small in the other days and there wasn't much room for entropy. That's just wrong. The right answer is that what you're looking at is not everything. You're looking at radiation coming from matter and radiation in equilibrium. That's what the flat curve is telling us. Matter and radiation in equilibrium. But that's not everything. What else is there? There's gravity. You're not looking at gravity. What you're looking at is uh, everything except the space-time geometry, and that is what Einstein tells us is gravity. Now let me be a little bit clearer about this by showing you uh, well, again. Showing you, uh, with some more cartoons if you like. Uh, sometimes the second law of thermodynamics is described in terms of gas in a box. And you might imagine that this gas is initially in a little compartment on the corner here, and then you remove the walls of the compartment, and it spreads itself over the box. And this is the sort of thing that happens when entropy increases, as time increases, and that's fair enough. But suppose these aren't gas molecules in a box, perhaps they are stars gravitating, attracting each other by gravitation, uh, gravitating bodies of some kind, and then they start to clump. This, again, represents an increase in entropy. So this, this, this is the increase in entropy, finally ending up in this black hole thing at the end. And uh, the, they both increase in entropy from left to right, but they look very different. And what we, in fact, see in the early universe is the flat curve telling us matter and radiation are in equilibrium in the early stages. And secondly, great uniformity over the whole sky. And that uniformity tells us that we're like this and that we're like this. So what you're really looking at is a combination of those two, high entropy with regard to the matter of radiation, low entropy with regard to gravity. And this, in fact, is the sort of thing that is important to us. Uh, here we have another cartoon. This is to do with what we get from the sun. People often think what we get from the sun is energy. That's not strictly accurate because what we get from the sun is not energy. That is to say, we get more or less the same energy from the sun as goes back out into the sky. So this is more or less, if, if we got lots more energy from the sun than it goes back, then the Earth would just get hotter and hotter and hotter. Of course it does, but that's a small effect on these considerations. Global warming is something that does happen. But it's important as it is, it's not relevant to this particular discussion here. More or less, it's the same amount comes in as goes out. So the, the energy is conserved, and that is not what we get from the sun. What we get from the sun is the fact that look, the sun is a hot spot in an otherwise dark sky. A hot spot means that the radiation coming from the sun is of higher frequency than that going away. Black's formula tells us high frequency means more energetic photons. That means we need fewer photons coming from the sun as they're away. So there are lots of photons going out and a small number coming in. Lots of photons mean lots of degrees of freedom, that means big phase space. So this means big entropy, low entropy. So what we get from the sun is a source of low entropy. And it keeps our entropy down. Here we have the plants, the other plants make use of this uh, high energy photons and degrade them into low energy ones, use that to build the substance up 
you take the garbage of that. Either by eating plants or eating animals and eat plants. That's basically how we keep ourselves going. Uh, and this comes about because the sun is a hot spot in an otherwise dark sky. Why is it a hot spot in an otherwise dark sky? Well, people might say all sorts of things like nuclear fusion and this and that. That's true, but the main thing is that the sun is there at all. If, if there were no nuclear reactions, the sun would still get hot. In fact, it would get much hotter and it wouldn't be as much use to us, but it would still be there and it would still be a hot spot in the dark sky. Not for so long, but it's still good. Um, the point, therefore, is that it's a hot spot in the dark sky, and that is because it was clumped from a previously uniform distribution of gas, and as it clumped, it got hot. This is the gravitational quantum effect, and this is just what I've been talking about here. It is that that we live off, um, and that's the key point that this slide is telling us about. Okay, it tells us now something else, which is that uh, the models that I've been showing you are not quite accurate, because I've drawn you the uniform uh, models without any um, gravitational clumping. So if you put the clumping in, and if you put in black holes, and I put here the singularities in the black holes, I'll say a bit more about black holes in a moment, then you will have singularities at the beginning of the Big Bang, and a great look at this, this case here, you see the big crunch. Instead of having a just neat little singularity like the one at the beginning, you're going to get a mess. Now I should really show you these other Cases. I didn't talk about them before, but these are the uh, models where you put in a cosmological constant of dark energy, if you like. And this number here is apparently positive from observation. This is very recent, when it's 1998 when people started to observe uh, evidence for this expansion. You see that these cases, particularly that, where the universe goes back down again, is the expansion sort of slows down. But what we actually find is the expansion speeds up. And this is a feature of this number lambda, which Einstein introduced into his equations in, in uh, 1917 uh, for the wrong reason. He was hoping to have a universe that was static, and this turned out not to be the case, the universe expanded. And so when he was convinced of this, he retracted it, and it is said that he called this his greatest mistake. However, you see, that his greatest mistake, if it was his greatest mistake, was actually a very powerful truth about the universe. The universe is like one of these moles here. Yeah. So Einstein was right again, even though it's wrong to retract the right. But he was right to introduce it. It does seem to be there is this cosmological constant, or something like it, or the dark energy if you like, um, and that is Also, to be, uh, to make it a bit more accurate, I include the singularities in black holes. Okay, I should say a bit more about black holes, because they will be rather important in the discussion. So let's say a black hole discussion. But there are those, the true model of the universe, as far as we know, seems to be one of those. Now this here is a picture of a black hole. It's a space-time diagram, again time is going up the picture here, and here we have some material, say some body, maybe a, a star which uh, couldn't hold itself apart, it's going to collapse, and it goes smaller and smaller as it collapses, and here we have what's called the horizon, the event horizon, and you see what Einstein's theory does for us is to, well, let me, I have to tell you something about light cones. So let me tell you something about light cones. Here we have a light cone, upside down, it should be upside down, here we are. 